and so he took me in and so for three years I drove uh, from Sacramento, California to San Francisco, which was an hour and a half uh, drive, every Friday night to go there and train with uh, Sifu uh, Grandmaster uh, Loban. And so one day uh, somebody says, uh, let's go over and check the other school out, which I was the younger guy. So I went over there and, and there was only one guy training me. And you stand in front of him there with some weights doing the form. I thought that was kind of interesting. And, and so it turned out to be T.Y. Wong, and he was in his 50s at that time. And then I went over and watched this guy, and he turned around and said, hi. And I said, hi. I said, uh, that's interesting, man. you know, you do some wasting. And he said, my name is Jimmy Lee. And uh, so he said, uh, you interested in, uh, in taking lessons? I said, well, I belong to the Tall Wayfair School. And he said, well, why don't you join this one? It's interesting. I said, okay. So I, I joined and started training, and I see Jimmy there once in a while. So one day, uh, Jimmy said, are we coming out with a book on the Silver of Kung Fu? So I said, okay, good. Uh, I buy a copy, so I bought a copy. And one day I came to class, and Jimmy said, I'm out of here. So I have a, uh, you know, uh, uh, the old man that accused me of stealing 10 bucks. <laughs> cheating about 10 bucks from the books. Right. He said, I, I said, you know, he's, he's, you know, it's too screwy. So I said, he said, I'm going to go train in my house. If you want to come, you're welcome. It's good. So I followed him there, and we trained for uh, almost a year and a half at his house. And one day he said to me, he said, uh, are you going to the Wally James Luau, the Island Jiu-Jitsu Club, uh, Luau, they have one every year. Wally J is a famous Jiu-Jitsu Jiu uh, guy. Yeah. Master, yes. yeah, yeah, so he had a Luau every year to raise money for, uh, uh, you know, his uh, Island Jiu-Jitsu uh, team, yeah, right, right. Judo team. <clears throat> so he said, uh, every year he'd have somebody to make a demonstration, a feature guy. He said, this year is 1962. Uh, I think around August or summer. Uh, yeah. He said, uh, he's going to have a young guy there, a kung fu guy, you want to go see him. His name is Bruce Lee. He's only 18 years old. I said, what, 18? What did he know? He said, I'm going to come and see him. He's 18, fantastic. what did he know? Yeah, he's fantastic. So I went to the Luau, and so Bruce jumped on the stage and, and said, uh, if anybody, uh, first of all, he went on a monologue about how ineffective traditional Kung Fu was. He says, like driving and swimming. Well, I could just see all the Kung Fu masters in the audience turning red in the face. Right there as he was saying? Oh yeah, oh yeah. He was trashing uh, the ineffectiveness of, uh, of traditional Kung Fu. He said, how can you turn, learn to train with just doing forms? He said, it's a classical mess. And then, and then, uh, then, then he said, now nah, I'm gonna show you what I do. So he said, anybody want to, want to stand in front of me, come up here. And, Stop my okay. punch. So some big old guy jump up there with that football type. He said, okay, you ready? Boom. He did that, touched his head. And the guy, <laughs> it was too late. He said, baby, you're not ready. You ready again? Boom. The guy was too soon. <laughs> and so he did that to a couple of guys and they went on. And so he did about a half hour demonstration and he talked about the most conceptual aspect of, of how he, he viewed Kung Fu right, as a right. fighting body. So afterwards, uh, uh, Jimmy uh, said that, hey, uh, why don't you come over Monday night and so we're going to have a small group of people right. together meet Bruce. So I went there on Monday night and there were about seven, eight people. So you had had, before when you met Bruce, you had had about seven, eight years of training? Oh, yeah. Okay. I was uh, already, uh, after I, I trained, I was training in, in Silom Kung Fu. I had trained already in Charlie Fun. And then I was training in... Uh, Taekwondo. I found a Taekwondo uh, instructor at Sacramento uh, State University. Right, right, right. He was a student. And I heard he was a fourth degree black belt, so I went over to him and asked him to give me lessons. So I, uh, two of my friends were in the fire department. So the three of us would go to my church, uh, fellowship hall, and three days a week we would train. Then I would go out on Friday night and see Bruce. Right. See, Bruce said he's going to come down and live in Oakland with Jimmy Lee. So, uh, on that, Jimmy said, well, Bruce will be coming down yeah. to Seattle to teach a class here. He said, I want to So I, I, t I went there the first time. And, uh, but I had already been a seasoned boxer. Right. So you were doing all that, and you still were a seasoned boxer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you and went so to... everybody was struggling to find a way to, to develop their fighting skills. I already knew how. 
See, and, and so, so Bruce had everybody standing like that. And I said, that's the southpaw. I said, well, I'm a right hand. I said, why would you want to do that? He said, well, you, yeah, you right hand and you put your power hand first. And I said, well, Bruce, I'm a boxer. I, uh, I, I hook off my left jab and I sit, uh, use my jab set up for the right hand. Right. My power is right here. I'm right here. I feel uncomfortable trying to jab with my right hand. So he said, well, do what you want to do. But he, he didn't say that until after I showed him. I shot a couple of jabs out, hooked off the jab, and uppercut, bang. And, and he said, like that. And then he said, well, do what you want to do. And so we were practicing. There were about eight people there. We stand in front of each other and go in circle, in, in, in circle, changing partners. And when we were shooting uh, front hand, I could hit those guys anytime I wanted to, but none of them were really seasoned fighters. They were just beginning to learn in that class. Right, right. And Bob Baker was one of those guys in that Bob class. And, 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 and he ended up playing uh, in one of the movies, uh, playing the Russian guy in Bruce Lee's movie. Is he still alive? No, he died a long time ago. He did? But, but Bob, uh, Bruce made him look pretty good in the thing, but when he was in front of me, uh, I mean, I could hit him with anything. At will? Oh, yeah, because they're not used to boxing. See, so to me, boxing is the ultimate. So my, today, my art is, is boxing base. But I, I set up things with foot sweep and, and low kicks right, right. To, to, to open up the, the, with my, uh, my punching skills. So you use the low kicks to close and no, get to, closer? To, to, to take the attention off of up here. So as soon as I hit you, uh, your mind's down there, boom. So, right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. So, so I, I think I read on your, your website that uh, that you influenced Bruce Lee to incorporate more boxing into his development as a martial artist. He taught you some things, but then you also taught him some things. Yeah, well, he, mainly what he taught me was this, and, and this changed my life. See, Linda, his wife, had right. one of the students called me to come to one of those conventions. He said, I never go by that because most of those guys call themselves Jim Kim Do experts know nothing, most of them never met Bruce. Right. So I, I, I got sick of the whole thing, everybody trying to imitate Bruce and, and make money off of his name. Right, right. So finally, I never showed up for those things, they had it every year. So finally one day, uh, Alan Joe, who was uh, one of my uh, classmates in the Oakland school, called up and said, Linda called me and asked if he would come to see Alan and speak. I, I just want to uh, you know, And I said, well, yes and no. <laughs> I said, yes is, uh, do I pay my way? They said, no, no, they'll take care of everything. I said, okay, good. They might change the whole tenor. Right, 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 right. So I went up there, and when I got up to speak, uh, everybody would get up and speak and talk about Bruce, you know, tell a little bit of him yet, uh, uh, little things that happened to him with Bruce. What I did, being a preacher, I got up and I said, and I said, three people influenced my life. One with Jesus Christ, who gave me a spiritual foundation, and whatever life brought to me, on my journey, uh, the love of Christ showed me how to transcend, turn to turn lemon into lemonade. Okay, the second person that had influence in my life was my father. So I never was very close to my father. My house, our house burned down. We lost everything. I was a senior in college, and I ran back home, and everything was ashes. And so he was staying with the neighbors, the family, and so. He said, well, we're going to go to the post office. He said, we're going to the post office. So I went to the post office with him. And one of our African-American customers said, hey, chief, and they used to call him chief. Hey, chief, what are you going to do now? You know, everything's, you know, you lost it. He said, well, when life knocks you down, you get up and, and, and do it again. That impressed me. That, that had a, uh, it hit the nail on the head. It, it kind of uh, brought uh, uh, tears to my eyes. I said, wow. And, and I never forgot that. So whatever happens in life, you can turn around. And said, I said, the third person had the influence in my life was Bruce Lee. And, and what happened was one day, Bruce, when I was training with him, I would go to the go through school, and I would go to the Taekwondo class, I'd go here and there looking for other classes, you know, to see what they had. So Bruce said, hey, why aren't you going all these classes? At first I thought he, he, he was kind of jealous, you know, he don't want me to going to be poor lawyer to It wasn't that. He was just trying to pick my head of my mind. So I said, well, I'm trying to find the ultimate. And then uh, he put his finger on my chest like this, man, 
ain't no ultimate. The ultimate's right here. 